Soon, the Advani Bungalow had new occupants, the Khans from Lucknow, Mohajirs. The beautiful unicorn gate, which had occupied a place of pride in both Syed and Advani households, was dismantled and a simple iron barrier was put instead at the Syed Bungalow, a lone door with no connection to the neighbors. Thus, while the Sindhi identity was cherished between the erstwhile Muslim and Hindu neighbors, the equation between Sindhu and Muhajir, the equation between Sindhi and Muhajir was distant and suspicious. A new history was being created. Old ties were broken and new ones frayed. That was what the Radcliffe line had achieved. The Advani family saw their home, roots, and land being snatched away from them as a consequence of unfortunate events. Sindh was just a distant memory. In their hearts, they knew there would be no going back. Bombay would be their new home. But would they ever be able to call it their own? That was the bleak future that stared at them. Whatever spare time Sheila had, she went around talking to fellow passengers and assuaging their feelings, even as they stayed numb and traumatized. Though she could not meet many people due to the paucity of time, the ordeal of three families she met left her completely shaken. They were from different regions. While the Sharma family was from Larkana, the Gidwanis were from Hyderabad and the Nagpals from Shikrapur. The Sharmas were a big family of four sons and two daughters. The head of the family was Basarmal. His wife was Sarla. Sarla was accompanied by two of her sons, Deepak and Suraj. It was a broken family. And the two, as the two daughters and the older sons had left for India a couple of months earlier, Sheila was intrigued and asked, Sarla Bhavi, where's your husband? And why did part of the family leave while you stayed back? With tears in her eyes, but with utmost composure, the lady willingly shared her ordeal. <laughs> we are from Larkana. My husband was a priest who performed puja and rituals for many families on different occasions. On October 3rd, that was a black day for us. My husband was performing the morning prayers and pouring water on the shivling when a, when a mob came rushing towards the temple with lathis and stones shouting, Allahu Akbar and Kafir Komaro. And before he could react, the mob showered heavy blows and that he's on him. His gun cracked and... She broke down and sobbed uncontrollably. It was as if, as if the floodgates of bottled up emotions had been opened. Sheila hugged her tightly and let her cry in her embrace. Purshottam Kidwani was a sessions judge in Hyderabad, a man of integrity who was known for his clarity and sharp intellect. Kamala Gidwani was the eldest daughter, a few years older than Sheila, who was traveling with her 70-year-old grandmother, Sati, 50-year-old caretaker, Kaushalya, and 10-year-old Rani, her sister. Sheila befriended her by offering her yummy koki and pickle. A traditional Sindhi dish was a great way to start a conversation. Hello. I'm Sheila Advani. We have brought a lot of cookies for the journey. Would you like to, would you like some? Did I hear the word cookie or am I dreaming? The grandmother shouted from a distance. Yes, Amma, you heard right. This kind lady has offered us some. Amma's eyes lit up. She greedily accepted the cookie and while munching, she started talking incoherently about everything possible under the sun. All connected with their banishment from their beloved Sindh. Kamala joined Sheila and they got chatting about their lives. Kamala told Sheila of the tragedy that had befallen the family. Two Pathans who were acquainted with us told us that told us we had overheard some people talking about the Judge Sahib. They were apparently plotting revenge on my father because he had given an adverse judgment against some people and sent them to jail. They cautioned my father and offered protection. My father thought nothing of his safety and refused any protection, brushing off the so-called revenge as an empty threat. But it was not. Father was butchered with swords and knives right in front of his court. Both the Pathans fought bravely with the assailants and dispersed them. They took my injured father to the hospital, but it was too late. 
Mohan Nagpal was taking a walk with Dhuni Chand, his 80-year-old father on the upper deck to get some fresh air. Hello, I'm Sheila Advani. I'm from Karachi. My brothers and mother are with me. Hi, I'm Mohan Nagpal. I'm from Shikarpur and my father is with me. As you can see, he's, he's mentally not there. He's still in a state of shock. Oh, what happened to him? Hope I'm not intruding, but if you'd like to talk, I'm a good listener. It'll lighten your mood, but if you'd prefer your privacy, I'll let you be and move away. Um, no, no. Please don't go. I'd love to talk. I haven't spoken to anyone in days. But first, if you don't mind, I'll get something to eat for my father. I'll have, him, I'll have him sit on that bench and then talk to you. But what is he going to eat? There are some biscuits and milk. He hates them. But what choice is there? At least it sustains him. <laughs> Sheila took this opportunity to take out her magic cookie and offer it to Mohan for his father. Mohan's face brightened at the sight of food. He smiled gratefully and told Sheila to give it to his father herself. Sheila held Duni Chan's hand and placed the cookie in it. Duni Chan looked in wonder at the cookie and then at Sheila. There was a flicker of recognition and a faint smile crossed his face. He tenderly touched the cookie because it revived many fond memories of Sindh. He took a hungry bite and had devoured it in no time, his eyes asking for more. My father was a big zameen. My father was a big zamindar in Shikarpur. One night, one night a mob stormed into our house. That day father and I slept in the shop as if it had gotten late and we did not want to venture out at night. But my mother, grandmother and my little brother were brutally killed. Mohan choked as he spoke and with tears in his eyes sat down on the deck and covered his face. Father got such a shock when he saw the mutilated bodies of the family. Mohan could not go any further. Sheila kept a consoling hand on his shoulder. He grabbed it, held it close to his heart and sobbed hysterically. As the Jal Durga anchored at Alexander Dock, the first impression of Bombay was anything but pleasant. The Karachi riots and the heavy influx of Sindhis into Bombay posed a real challenge to the government and the local population. Up to now, the official machinery was working on the assumption that not many people would leave their homes in Pakistan. But when they started arriving in large numbers, the government of Bombay, under the guidance of the then Premier BGK, geared up its resources on a war footing. Refugees were to be diverted to the military camp at Ulhasnagar, a place around 40 miles from Bombay. Sheila was pleasantly surprised to see Lakshman, her father's assistant who had migrated earlier at the docks. Sheila ran towards him and greeted him warmly, but his cold response unnerved her. She saw him looking tense. Lakshman, what's the matter? Are you not happy to see us? Lakshman hung his head and didn't look into her eyes. Soon Madhuri and the boys joined them and affectionately greeted Lakshman. Seeing Madhuri, he burst out crying. Sheila shook him impatiently and shouted, Lakshman, what has happened? Advani sir is no more. He was murdered in his store. Hearing this, Madhuri collapsed. A naval doctor was called to revive her. The doctor took Sheila aside and said, Please take care of her. In her present condition, she will not be able to bear more shocks. What, what condition are you talking about? What's wrong with her? You don't know? Your mother is pregnant. Sheila's head was reeling. Two shocks were too much for her. But she soon composed herself and rushed to her mother and brothers, hugging and consoling them. She took Lakshman aside and with tears in her eyes, asked the painful question. What happened to the body? Were proper rites performed? It seems Mustafa Sahib called a Brahmin Pandit. It seems Mustafa Sahib called a Brahmin Pandit and conducted the cremation. His ashes were immersed. They were immersed in the Indus by Salim. Lakshman replied. Thus, the Sin chapter had closed with the death of Prakash, but the Bombay chapter had opened with his child in Madhuri's womb.